Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode of Something for the Culture. I'm Jazzy J. Tonight we got a special guest, rapper to die for. How you doing, hon? I'm all right, I'm all right. How you doing, sweetheart? I'm doing good. Welcome to the culture. Oh, no doubt, no doubt. I've been dying to get, you know, been dying to get on here, you know. <laughs> so let's go ahead and jump right in. Can you go ahead and tell everybody who you are, where you rap in, for those people who do are not familiar with you or your body of work. All right, I'm a rap artist out of straight out of Compton. You know what I mean? I'm straight from Compton, California. You know, I'm affiliated with Top Dog Entertainment. You know what I mean? And, you know, hey, you know, this is what it is, you know? Okay, cool. So, all right, let's go ahead and get into some questions. And, of course, I'm going to ask you about some of the, the comments because you was actually um, heavily involved in last week's episode when we had legendary Tone, um, DJ Tony Tone from the yeah. Coast Park Brothers on. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so cool. Um, let me ask you, who were your music influences? Um, uh, Easy E, Tupac Shakur, you know, mm -hmm. like I, I'm from the 80s. I'm, I was born in 81, so I grew up, I, I, I didn't see the world car. I grew up in the 90s, you know what I mean? I watched the era, I watched all the best of the best. So my, my main influence mm -hmm. is pretty much like, you know, Easy E. No NWA. All okay, right, cool, cool, cool. So let me ask you, okay, any non hip hop influences that you may have had? Oh no doubt, Nickelback. Um, <laughs> Nickelback, I love Nick. I love you some Nickelback. Okay. I love you some, I love John Legend. You know what I mean? I love. I love all some of the old schools. You know what I'm saying? I love. I love some. You know, everybody cool. inspired me. You know, I write music so. That's mm -hmm. what makes me right. That's what makes me right to actually hear some, some of them, them actual classics. You know. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this, because you know some some artists who also write. Some people tend to say that maybe the artist is maybe a better writer than an artist, or you're a better artist than an actual writer. What, what what would you say about yourself? I'm a better writer. Okay. Why do you say that? Because I, 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 I rather a I, I I I got. 16 years worth of music written on paper. Okay. I can draw, I can I can release a double CD for 16 years flat. I never have to write again. I write on purpose. I got music written. I got so much music. I've been writing since I was 17 years old. You are dope. I actually got a question for you from Barry Irvin. He said, what made you get into music, especially hip hop? Oh, honesty, man. Ever since I was nine years old, I used to be in Compton and then like, I was nine and I was around like 16 year old people, kids. And I remember Scarface, the Scarface, when Scarface face came out. And I remember everybody used to be rapping like over his beats. And I was the youngest one. I was the youngest one. So I don't even remember half of the shit I used to say. I ain't gonna even front. So whenever <laughs> I like, I get out there, I say something. And I just remember everybody would grab me. Oh, you hard, you know, and made me feel like I was doing something. So. It's just been, ever since then, it's just been in me. But then I was more into football. So I was, I was supposed to like literally play football and did that. That was my goal. But then uh, the gang force, Compton and the gang life and my brothers and them, I got caught up in the gang life to where, you know, I got shot and it took my whole music career away from me. So, I mean, my whole football career. So that's what made me really pursue music, you know what I mean, as an artist. Okay. Okay, let me, what would you say defines your sound? You say what makes me what? Define your sound. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> oh my God, that's a hard one. <laughs> um, define my sound. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm trying to make, I mean, I try to try, I try to make it different. I try to sound different, but you know, by you, by you, by me coming from different eras and seeing different genres of music, I mean, I'm very, I'm very, you, I'm very unique because I can switch my style. I can rap about anything. I can write country music, rap music. I can write any kind of music, anything you want to write, like literally come to me. I can write about anything. So. I'm good at writing, so I don't have a, a, a certain sound because, you know, you know I me. Mean? I'm more of a writer than anything. Okay. How do you plan to change or make an impact on the hip hop culture? Um, 
see, these are the type of things I've been dying to like topics I've been dying to answer because I mean, my, 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 my answers are controversial. My answers are very controversial. So it's like more like, uh, I mean, I just want to make, I, I feel like this to everybody out there listening, man. And if you, this is facts, hip hop is not a culture. It's an entertainment business. A culture is knowing where you come from as a people, as a whole. You understand? And these are facts. I'm tired of people calling hip hop a culture. It's an entertainment business. That's why everybody getting paid off of it. And everybody that's not getting paid off of it is dying behind this shit. Because we look at it as a real culture and it's not something you live and die for. It's an entertainment business, sweetheart. We make money off of it. Well, I mean, that's not what it started as, though. So, I mean. It started, no, it started, no, it started as entertainment. Hip hop is entertainment. Not really. I mean, because when it started, this was, you know, we were, it was a gateway to talk about everything that our people were being suppressed by, you know, the, the poverty, the, 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 you know, just going through just day to day life. And that, that's how it actually became. A culture, in my opinion. I mean, but I mean, I mean, I can, I can, I can, no, 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 I can understand, I can understand that, I can understand that. Is this the way that people are using it today? Like, mm-hmm. okay, express yourself. We know about that. Express yourself. It's a way to express yourself, but to actually teach kids that is something you live and die for, which is a culture. That's not. It's not something that I'm. I'm willing to. That's not culture. Well, I agree with you. It has tremendously changed over time. And I think that's what some of the legends and the the founders of hip hop were saying that they're trying to kind of change the narrative back to what it first was about. But I totally agree with you. Now it has become all about profit. It's really not about the celebration of our people. I agree with you. Because I was I was looking at how a few artists, I'm not going to say no names and nothing like that, but of course. A, few, a few artists had has passed away mm-hmm. recently in the last past few years. And my, and like, you know, it just reminded me of the whole Tupac thing. When Tupac died, you know how many stands and how many people are out there selling Tupac shirts and Tupac family not seeing out profit and not one dime off of it? Yeah, look don't, at um, Kylie and um, Kendall. Yeah, don't <laughs> use my name. There's people out there doing Nipsey Hustle like that right now. Don't profit off my name, dog. Yeah. If you're not going to actually sit down with my family and make sure my kids or my family are going to profit off of what you're doing, don't use my name in vain. Right. And that's what's going on with a lot of people out here. They actually riding a wave. And, and like I say, funerals are becoming fashion shows these days. People are going to fashion shows like they actual concerts now, just taking pictures and smiling and laughing. It's not about the actual person anymore. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, it, the, the, the world, it's all messed up. It's all messed up. You understand? I agree with you. I, I totally see your point with that. I mean, it, it, as far as it comes to some of these legends that have passed away and they're, you know, kind of just using their name or face or even brand sometimes. Um, the estates have every right to, to sue these people or pull these things off the rack. So why, my question is, why aren't they doing that? Because like right now, it's just like a drug spot. Long as I can open up a drug spot and sell drugs right here, nobody ain't for to say nothing. But if we actually see somebody with your face on a shirt in any community, Mm-hmm. And we get on their ass and tell them, hey, dude, that ain't cool. We need to stop allowing that. We allowing it. It's just, that's all it is. We allowing it. You know what I mean? Okay. So let me ask you, what's going on right now? You know, everybody's talking about this Nick Cannon and Eminem bullshit. <laughs> what's your thoughts on the entire thing? All right, now, now this is something that's important. As an artist, as an artist, to protect my brand, I can say what I want to say. Okay. You know, I can't say what I want to say, but on the flip side of the coin, on the flip side of that coin, it's entertainment. They having fun. They just keep it. I swear, I love the way they doing it with strictly on wax or music. Mm-hmm. There's no violence. There's no. I see your homies. I fuck your homies up and. It's all music and it's all fun and entertainment. So I love the way they're doing it. I ain't gonna lie. 
But now he hasn't actually responded from from my knowledge. Who? It's the same, Eminem. It's the yes, same. he did. He, he just released one, and he what said, was, "What's the name of the track?" I fuck. I forgot. I should have saved it. He said they names Charlie Clips and all their names. I swear he did. I he thought did. that was one of the stands that did that. Nah, I don't know. I don't know what's going. Look, I don't know. I I really don't be paying attention to it. But hey, look, that whoever did that song right there, they they did they thing. Is there anybody you would like to work with that you haven't before? Oh yeah, yeah yeah. Um, Dre. Yeah, any day if Dre hear my voice, like if my voice over Dre beats, I think we'll make a we'll make a nice collaboration. You know what I mean? Okay. But yeah, Dr. Dre, um, I like to work with legends, you know what I'm saying? Like if you really go to my Instagram, you'll see me with Cool Mo D. You'll see there's no or like I'm I, I touch bases with every well known artist, legends and all that. So if to actually do us Curtis Blow, Curtis Blow, come on, dog. Mm -hmm. You gotta get the blow. I gotta get one with the blow. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I gotta get one K R S one. You know what I'm saying? Um Snoop. Like you know, all all the pioneers. You know what I'm saying? Pioneers. I'm I'm more. Of a, I'm a pie. You know, I love pioneers. You know, I'm a, I got an old soul, man. I gotta do the you know do collab. All this new stuff between me and you is gonna play out later. But to actually make music that's gonna live forever and be here two or three like you know ten, twenty, you know a hundred years from now, you gotta work with the pioneers, bro. All that new stuff gonna play out. It's all a wave right now, and everybody riding it. You know what I'm saying? And it's eventually gonna. It's gonna turn into ripples, you know what I'm saying? Right. All right. What's your dream collaboration with any producer wise? Pro to produce my music? To uh -huh. produce my music. Um oh my god. Like I say, Dr. Dre, Ice Cube. Ice Cube for sure, for sure, for sure. Cube, um, you can't, you can't forget. Um, I gotta get. Um, who else would I? Um, damn, there's so many of them producers out there. Oh my god, you had that's an amazing question. But yeah, Ice Cube, that's my dream collaboration. Ice Cube, like to actually sit down and get in a studio with Cube, that's my dream. I ain't gonna lie, like to actually do something with him. Okay. All right, who would you put in your top five of hip hop, dead or alive? Oh, so you can't do that. That's yeah. not yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, look. I'm live. Look, I didn't know. I didn't know. That's my bad. It's because she asked me earlier and I said no, but she asked you. You stop that. Look. Uh, my bad. Look, stop you. I'm going to whoop you. We, we got a problem. My bad, y'all. Hey, look, I'm live. <laughs> Come on, dog. We gonna talk. Uh, yeah, um, say, uh, yeah. Oh, you can't do that to me, man. Okay, because you got. Okay, listen to me. My top five, dead or alive, dead. Well, I can't. I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't do that because you know I got love for. Let, let's talk about it, okay? Okay. Biggie Small, Biggie Smalls. Okay. You know what I'm saying he can. He. Can, I'm sorry. He can never be in my top five. I love. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm gonna make it even more juicier. You gotta put them in order from one being the highest, you know, and five being the lowest. I'm for the kill. I'm for the. I'm for the. I'm for the blow your mind. I can <laughs> never say. I can never say. Nipsey Hussle. Shout out to Nipsey. You know what I'm saying? You know, R.I.P. Nipsey Hussle. You know what I mean? And Lori London. I just did a little a little movie with Lori and all them. Like you know, nothing but love for the whole, the whole, the whole, um, the whole movement over there. You know what I'm saying? Marathon movement. But um. Nipsey Hussle and and Biggie Small can never be in my top five. Wow, why not? Because in order for you to be a legend or be in my top five, you have to. In order to be a legend, mm -hmm. you have to do five albums or better. Nipsey only released one album, and Biggie Small only released two albums. They can never be labeled legends, dog. I'm sorry. You know, you know, you fit to have a whole bunch of people coming. <laughs> yeah, tell them, let's go. Let's go because these are facts. And if you really want to talk the definition of a legend to, to die for, if you're not talked about after a hundred years and your music not playing a hundred years, a hundred years from now, you can never be a legend. A legend live forever. 
Now, will they, will, are they considered? Twinkle, twinkle, twinkle little star. Let's talk, about, let's, let's talk about Mozart. Mozart, okay. Mozart died in 1776, and his mm -hmm. music still played today. That's, That's legend. That's legend. The You're song Dear right. Mama, the song Dear Mama will play hundreds of years from now. Tupac will be, is a legend. He will live forever. So let me ask you this. Will those two that you named, are you consider them as street legends or you just don't consider them as legends at all? Nah, nigga, listen to what oh, I'm let, let me let me take let me let me let, let now we get somewhere. For as like like you know, mainstream. Mm -hmm. We, I can't even be labeled a legend because I ain't released three albums. So, you know, no. We nigga street legends, them niggas, hey, look, I take my hat off to them. Nipsey mm -hmm. Hussle did everything Tupac said he wanted to do. That's why I take my hat off to Nipsey. Period. Nipsey Hussle is the living proof of every word Tupac Shakur said. That's that. That's that. They street legends, yes. They street legends that he's living proof on what we the entertainer supposed to do. We supposed to make money off of this music mm -hmm. and actually build up our community off of it. Not just take it, run to the suburbs, my nigga and live happily ever after. We supposed to literally look out for our community. And that's what Nipsey did and he died for it. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So I respect that. I take my hat off for that. Nip rest in peace to Nipsey. Um big um Biggie Small done a lot, you know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. for his music. Let like music. Numbers they, wise. They, they, they haven't done enough. So then you fully agree with the statement that Blueface manager made that. No, I don't agree with him. Listen to what I'm saying. I don't agree with him with that because I'ma truly say this. That was bullshit what he said. And if he nigga I fuck I'm telling out of my mouth. That's bum shit what that nigga Blueface said and that nigga Whack 100 said. They until you live to see a hundred years old, bro, and them niggas' music die out within a hundred years, you can never not say they ain't legend. Give them a time, enough time to live, bro. Don't do that, my nigga. Don't do that, dog. That's not yeah. fair. Give them enough time. I say, let's say fifty years. Let's say Nipsey Hussle, legend. If Nipsey like Nipsey, you know, let's say just Nipsey, mm -hmm. Big and Tupac, they're forever. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They're forever. Easy E is forever. Nipsey Hussle just made his, he just did what he had to do. So when it all boils down to it, huh? They broke it. So, so Nipsey Hussle, yeah, he's in line. I give that to him. Yep. Okay. Nipsey Hussle in line. Would they, would they, would they be legends? Would they live to be legends? Yeah. I mean, would they, would they live forever? Would they name be live forever for like, yes, I give that. Yes. I, I take, yes. Yes, but are they legends now? No. Tupac or none of them not. Your music got to play. You got to be you got to be looked over and talked about for more than 100 a uh, 100 years or better. You have to be looked over and talked about. I mean generations from now, 5 10 generations have to know you in order to be labeled a legend. Mozart is a le Mozart is a legend to me. That's a true legend. Okay. I mean, you made valid points. Very valid points. Got another question here for you. Um, Barry Irvin says, in your opinion, what separates a rap artist from just a rapper, if you understand? Uh, yeah, you yeah, yeah. I love that conversation. A, a rap artist is just labeled. A rapper is just sitting on your, a rapper is just sitting in your label, local neighborhood, rapping. A rap artist is getting, an artist is getting paid royalty checks. Let's talk about it, big dog. Let's go. We can, I love that conversation. Mm -hmm. Artists get paid for shows, traveling, actually getting paid for their craft. An uh, actual, actual rapper is sitting in your hood rapping, talking about what the fuck they want to do with their lives. My nigga, do something with it. Rappers ain't doing shit with themselves. Actor, uh, actual artists are getting paid for their craft. That clears that up right there. So do you think there's a bunch of rappers that we have in this era? A lot, no, listen to me. Yes, yes. Tupac opened that door. Whenever Tupac died, they taught they they made sure when they came out with social media that they watered down the whole music industry that one person can never be labeled the greatest again. We're gonna make it to where anybody can be a millionaire overnight. We're just off of a beat. Okay. And it's that easy. Social media made it easy for niggas to be in it. Like I say, I'm gonna tell you something. And this goes for everybody out there. If you have if you have um, 
social media, dude, that's cool. I'm doing, you know, millions and thousands of views. Could you imagine this? Imagine this. If social media shut down right now, always remember, social media, your numbers is what got people, you're the reason why you're popular. Mm -hmm. The moment that social media crash, or say, for example, social media crash, mm -hmm. nobody will never know you in real life. All you can tell people, I had a million views on social media. If they can't pull it up, my nigga, you're, you're, you're dead weight. Mm -hmm. So you got to get out here and put on. Like, literally get out here and put on. You know what I mean? You say, to die for how I can hear that. But yeah, you got to get out there and do the footwork. You know what I'm saying? It's easy to sit in four walls and become a rapper. Like, perform or record a song and put it on social media and be an artist. It's easy to do that. But I don't know too many real rapper niggas that's actually out there performing and traveling the world and doing... Let me give you a story real quick. Just okay. Real quick. Okay. This is going to show y'all the definition of a, a real a real person that love music. Mm. All right, well, let, me, let me say, to, to pursue your dream, let's say... I went to, um, I was in Boston. I was in Boston. Mm -hmm. And while I was in Boston, everybody like, like, you know, I'm in a hotel. The niggas like, hey, man, let's go to the, hey, we finna go to IHOP to eat. Mm -hmm. Mind you, hey, you hear me, Jazz? Mm -hmm. Mind you, sweetheart, I only got $5 and a round trip ticket home, girl. I'm on the phone like, hey man, you know what I'm saying? Nah, man, I ain't even hungry. I'm 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 playing. I'm starving like a motherfucker, sweetie. I'm mm -hmm. like, yeah, man, I don't need nothing. I'm good. I'm good. Nah, I'm go. Yeah, I go ahead and go, man. Uh -huh. The whole time I'm starving. Let me. The moral of the story is this right here. I spent my last two hundred and fifty dollars to go to that fucking to go to way to Boston to perform for five for ten fucking minutes. That's the definition of like with five dollars in my pocket. That's called loving your craft, chasing your dream across the map. That's the definition of somebody who have ambition and want it. Dedication. Now all these, yeah, niggas sitting around here talking about they rappers, my nigga, but they ain't willing to spend that last five dollars, my nigga, to go get nigga go perform. You on that bullshit. But that's what it's about. So that's that's where that come from. Yeah, it's it's crazy out here, man. People talking about they rappers and they just fucking up the whole game for everybody else because you just in the way. If you're not going to pursue it and give it your all, you're in the way of the next person who really love it. I was just about to ask you that. Like, what what advice would you give to those who are trying to get to your level or just even be heard? I'm going to tell you, look, I remember, like, I'm 38 years old, y'all. Fuck, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm 38 years old. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm grown. And my career just took off five years ago. I didn't gave some of the best years of my life, 20s and all that, laid the fuck up in and out of relationships and shit. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, I'm living proof to be able to tell you that the moment I start really investing in myself, my career took off. Invest in yourself. I don't care. Put that weed habit down, that drinking down, get rid of that broad if she ain't trying to push you forward. You all the energy you got to give to a relationship, you have to give to your career. There's no plan in between that shit. Ain't no being in a relationship and being a rapper or, or being an artist. You have to the same energy you put into your career, you have to put into a relationship. So what are you gonna do? It's up to y'all. Invest in your career or invest in that mother, lay the fuck up. It's on y'all, dog. To piggyback off that, I, I want to um, quote the words of um, Jay French, rapper out of <laughs> Oklahoma. Um, matter of fact, Kanye's cousin. Um, he said, go for broke. If this is what you want, then you need to go for broke. Do you agree with that? Say, what, what you mean? He said, if, you're, if this is your craft and you believe in it, you should be out here going for broke. Then I, hey, look, I just explained that to you. I was just the way I just spent 200 and something dollars to go away to Boston and have five dollars in my pocket to perform for 10 minutes and come home with five dollars in my pocket and say that I performed in Boston. Yeah, yeah you yeah. gotta go for broke if you want it. You better, you better be willing to spend your last dollar to get to that event, no matter where it's at on the face of this planet, if you want that shit. Go for broke. That's exactly what he means, sweetheart. Yes, hell yeah, I'm willing to go for broke. Okay. So let, let's get into um, last week's episode. Because mm -hmm. you were heavily involved <laughs> when, um, at the time, I was interviewing DJ Tony Tone from the Cold Force Brothers, a, a legend. 
um, we were talking about just you know, our people as a whole, how we could change, um, what's holding us back. And you have a lot to say. You want to maybe just go ahead and unload? <laughs> I'm going to clear it up. I'm going to clear it up. Um, because let's say, for example, um, us as a race, black people, it starts right here. Home. In order for us to fix us as a race, we got to start teaching our kids how to do better. Period. That's this number one start. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I, I was listening to them and, you know, they said like it is, you know, they tell us to respect our elders. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But the elders is the reasons why we're fucked up right now today. They were so busy living their lives. They didn't give a fuck. They did not prepare for all us. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, let's talk about that shit. Let's, okay. I love let's elaborate. It. I, elaborate what you mean. I love it. Okay, here we go. It goes something like this. Okay. Um, where do I start from? Um, um, most of the elders do. They, they said like, damn, how could I put it? I don't want to say it to where, you know, um, say, say it however it, it, it's in your heart. Just say it. All right, then. You, you sure? Yeah. You keep sure? It All right, well, then fuck it like, say it like it is. The elders fucked up. They fucked up the ones before us with the re is the reason why we're fucked up. Because if they was teaching us how to run companies, learn how to teach us how to own companies and businesses, we'll be doing good today as a race. They sit here and tell us to respect them motherfuckers. Oh, respect your elders. What the fuck have you done? Hold on, let me show y'all some. Don't move. Give me one second. Okay. All right, y'all. He getting ready to go grab some information for this conversation. In the meantime, um, December twentieth will be the the season finale for something for the culture. We got um, rapper positive case, so y'all tune in for that. Welcome Look, back. Check this out, y'all. Look, you see that? Okay. Certificate of recognition signed by the Los Angeles District 9 council members for being the leader of the community, dog. Where the fuck was these OGs at? What the fuck y'all been doing all these years? Y'all been sent back and threw y'all lives away and y'all tell us to respect y'all? No, nigga, get your ass out here. Y'all supposed to been out here making a way for us, dog. And, and listen to me, I'm not mad at them. They made their mistakes. That's why I got one of these because I'm for to make sure that I'm going to be in, in this generation, our generation, they're going to be able to say to Dafo, play this part. Well, hold on, because now, I mean, I get where you're coming from. However, you know, the point of it is not to, some may say, you know, who gives a fuck about recognition? I mean, it's not, there's a lot of elders that were out in, in the pain doing what they needed to do and have never gotten recognition for it. They died doing what they love for trying to help their people. But the ones that, and this is the things that I'm saying, though. That's the things that I'm saying. Those is the ones that, the ones that's living today, supposed to be helping us remember. Mm -hmm. They supposed to be telling us that. Exactly how you just said it. The last dude that was just on here, supposed to have been talking about somebody that was in his era, that done something so positive to make us go do our research and go worship that, you know, go actually, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I mean, you know, and this is not to make an excuse for our people by any means necessary, but that Will Lynch shit is a real thing. We are systematically broken down. Yeah, they did that. it was it was a design. Listen to me. Long as we look at it the way it needs to be looked at, it's a design. All right, let's talk about let, let me give you let me let me and see people tell me to make a video, like make videos about what I'm gonna say. Mm -hmm. Let's talk yes. about it. Let's talk about it. You wanna know why the black home is fucked up? Yes. Number one reason is because a black woman is willing to actually. They said, "No, no, I'm not. Gonna say, I'm not blaming y'all. I'm not. I'm on you all side." I'm so listening. Go ahead. It go like this: A black woman is willing to raise a kid by herself because a man cheated. Understand what I'm gonna tell you? This for the fuck your head up, Miss Lady. Do you know that white? Why do you think white people and every other races? Go to therapy for that shit because cheating and fucking different women, women is actually a mental fucking disease. That man needs.
I'm, make, I'm not making no, no, no. I'm not making excuses. I'm not making excuses. I'm saying. I'm not saying you are at all. It's, it's, a mental, it's, a mental, it's a mental health. It's a mental disease. So a woman, I'm not saying that, you know, I'm just saying, though, if you know that that man have a problem and you say you love him, you supposed to help give him, get him help. Y'all get help together. Okay. That man have an addiction. He like to, he cannot stop doing that type of stuff. Let That's me ask why, you right now. But a white woman would, would rather get her husband therapy and all that just to keep that man in the house with them kids, just to keep him in the house. We are, our women are willing to actually raise a fucking kid by herself just because out of bitterness, dog. Like out of bitterness. You understand? I, now I let me show you how let me show you how it goes. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you, but see, listen to me. But I'm gonna tell you it's meant to, it ain't got nothing to do with a black man or a black woman. Let me clear it up. Okay. It has nothing to do with black man or black woman. It's for the fuck y'all head up on how I'm gonna show y'all how they got us mentally trained and fucked up. It goes just like this. A black woman kick a man out for cheating. You see what I'm saying? Now your kid, be, because she's bitter, now your kid become a, re, a, a welfare recipient. Your baby daddy can never get a job. Listen to me. He can never get a job because they took his license from him. So he can never get a job to get a, get a car to go get a job. So now he's in and out of jail. So he's fucked. Your kid become a welfare recipient. You would never, ever be able to get a job because you don't know how to fill out a job application because all you've been doing is filling out motherfucking government papers for 18 fucking years. That's exactly... No, 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 listen to me. That's how the system is built to fuck us as a race. I'm not, I'm we not so, saying we that so wrong in that aspect, but what I... what I This is the thing that kind of taken me aback because you're saying that... Basically, now not all black women. Let me just clarify this: not all black women don't try to hold their family together. That's simply not true. That's not true at all. Facts, facts. Because there's many a black women that try to hold their family together. I'm one. I am one, personally speaking. However, I will say this: you can't force physically force someone. To go to therapy, you can suggest it, but that that man, the black man, does yeah. not. If we're, if we're going there, the, a lot of black men do not like to go to therapy because they deem it as weak. Yeah, no, and not only yeah because they feel they listen to me because they actually feel that you know what I'm saying they don't want to face they actual they don't want to face that shit. They don't want to face they they want to face that shit. But at the end of the day, it all boils down to. A woman gonna be bitter, you know what I'm saying? She's bitter. This man need help. And at the end of the day, it's a child caught up in the middle of that shit. And that's why we fucked as a race. And that's why a woman end up raising kids by herself. This nigga's running wild, different places and this and that and that and this. I was gonna say it's just that. I mean, there's a lot of men out here that don't wanna take care of they, the, with their responsibilities too. Because, hey, now, now we get somewhere. Now, listen to me. I'm gonna tell you, a female, they argue me up and down on social media about that topic. I told a female this right here. Okay, now we getting somewhere. Say me and you meet each other, right? I tell you, I don't want to have any kids. You mm -hmm. say you don't want to have any kids. Mm -hmm. I'm bringing protections. I'm wearing condoms and I'm bringing protection. You're not taking birth control. The condom breaking, you end up pregnant. Who's responsible? I mean, I get your point, and I and I, <laughs> I agree. However, there's also another scenario too that there's a lot of men out here that play that role as if they're all for children or whatever the case, or they're trying to make a build with this woman, and then when it comes down to it, when the child is actually conceived, they take the fuck off on them and leave the woman struggling. Yeah, them some bum ass niggas. That's what you call bum ass niggas. But you actually got men out here that's like, look. Say, for example, me, I don't want to say, I don't want to put too much business, my business, personal business on here because I have not ever did that with social media. So let's just say it like this. Um, I have, I have a few baby mothers and every last one of them mm. fuck with me because of the potentials. They see the potentials in me. They but have you know what by that. Like, and it's, and, and, and then at the end of the day, by me being a good man, Mm -hmm. I really sit there and took responsibility. Now, I could have been a motherfucker, fucked up nigga. Like, I told you I don't want no kids. Fuck you, bitch. I'm not going to be responsible. But I'm not like that. You see what I'm saying? I was listening to me. Some people, some men, like with me, 
I tell them, I don't want no kids. You have the baby anyway because you know the sex is good and you're infatuated by the situation. So mm -hmm. you have the kid anyway. And now, you know, basically I'm forced to be a father. I'm forced to be a father now. I mean, you're not, I mean, if you laid down and made that baby, nobody- You see how that sound? Like no, 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 you see how that sound? Because of what that, that's not fair because it goes like this and take two to tangle. And if I'm, if a man, look, I'm gonna tell you, this is where women get life fucked up at. If a man look you in the face, if I'm, I'm putting myself in your shoes. Okay. Any nigga look me in my face and tell me I don't want a kid, nigga, and I get pregnant, nigga, I'm not for the heaven. Well, That's first of all, this, this, know. this gets misconstrued there because the whole situation, you need to learn who you're dealing with in the beginning. Yeah, okay? yeah, facts, facts, now, facts. Let's facts. just say, hypothetically speaking, me or you, me and myself and you, or talking, we're on a date, whatever the case may be, and you explain to me your dislike for kids or whatever, you don't want to have kids ever, and I'm someone that wants to have kids, at that point, it's null and void for me. I'm kind of not. But, but I, I listen to this, that, that, exactly, exactly. You see what I'm saying? You cutting it off. But most females can look a man dead in the face like how many you sitting here talking to say, I can say I don't want no kids. You be like, I don't want none either, baby. I just want to, you know, have fun and whatever. Mm -hmm. And nigga, the sex is good. And, you know, they in fact, they get infatuated with the situation. They mm -hmm. get pregnant. Mm -hmm. A female sit here and told me, if I, I, I told a female, like, I told her my same scenario. What if a man told you you don't want to get pregnant and you get pregnant? And she be like, well, if I don't believe, if, 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 my, if it's against my religion or I don't believe in an abortion, then I'm going to have it. You, I'm saying you and your, your religion and your belief should raise that kid by your own if that man walk out because he already told you he didn't want it. He told you that. So well, you can't force him to be there. No, that's what I'm saying. Now we're going back to the whole thing that I'm sitting here saying. I can be using protection with you telling you I don't want no kid. And uh -huh. you looking me in my face telling me you don't want no kid, but you're not on birth control. And you get pregnant, and you sit here and tell me you're gonna have it anyway, even though I already said there told you. Now you have it, and I walk away. I'm the deadbeat, and I ain't shit. But we said there. I can now, truly say this is a, this is the answer I'll be this is the answer I'll be looking for for most women. Okay. You're right, my nigga. It's both. It take both two to tangle. But every no, woman be okay. most 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 women be like, nah, that's y'all fucking respect. You were wrong if you walk away from that woman if she's pregnant. He told you he didn't want no kids. He brought protection to the table. You wasn't being safe. So he's wrong because you got pregnant? No, that's what I'm saying. Now, let's stay on that track right there. He's bringing protection to the table. You're not taking birth control. He's wrong because you got pregnant now? He played for, He played his part. He was 50 feet. He played his part. He played his part. He brought his protection. He was trying his hardest not to. He played his part. You wasn't being responsible. And then take your, you know, you wasn't being responsible. So it's like, if you wrong. What you're saying. Females be like, no, at the end of the day, he's still wrong for walking out on this kid's life. He's wrong. It's his, he the reason why I'm pregnant. It's him. Well, it's that's him. a good line. Because at, at, the end of the day, at the end of the day, you know, y'all are supposed to be men, right? And y'all are the ones that's supposed to be the provider and everything else that comes along with that title of being a man. So... I understand what you're saying. It's a very tight, thin line that that, that scenario yeah. is. It's crazy. It's crazy. And personally, though, I would think that, and it's just my opinion, it's not a fact, opinion, that, okay, I understand you brought the protection. She wasn't on birth control if it happened. I would think that maybe y'all two can try to come to some type of conversation and resolution to do the next best step. No matter, even if you said out the gate you didn't want it, because now this situation is present now, and y'all need to figure out what y'all do, because at the end of the day, that is a human life that's, you know, baking inside her. So am I wrong, am I wrong for saying At the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, am I wrong for saying it the way I need to say it like this? Y'all the ones that make the decision. At the end of the day, whether whether you're gonna have it or not, a man don't have, we don't have a say so. I'm sorry. There's no we can't say shit about it. And that's what makes it fucked up about for us. Because either either regardless if you like, I'm gonna have it anyway, even regardless if you don't want it or not. I'm forced to be fucking responsible, regardless, dude. Well, I mean, everybody likes to 
Because at the end of the day, it's your decision. It's your decision at the end of the day. Of no course. matter what. Of course. So, when, so most of these kids, the most Bible of them say that we're not supposed to be having sex, premarital yeah. sex, and stuff like that. So what happened? What about that aspect? Yeah. Yeah, I understand all that. It goes all back to that, but I'm just, you know, I'm trying to figure. It, uh, we get back to where to, to the forest, like the black. That's where I'm getting everything for. It's a black broken home. This is where our homes is broken at, and shit is all fucked up. Because look how, look at the little shit that, like, how me and you do talking about this. If mm -hmm. for me to you, for me to you, I lived in 45 states. Mm -hmm. I didn't been to Brazil, China, Japan. I didn't travel. I mm -hmm. fuck with all kind of different cultures. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting here telling you by experience, this is our problem as a race. It's little things like this mm -hmm. conversation we're having that actually, because like I say, for example, if me and you was actually intimate and actually in a relationship and, and we would not be having this conversation, we are probably be, fuck you, bitch, get up. You know, we'll be going our own ways. Well, I mean, you can't say that scenario for every black woman or and I can't say my scenario for every black man because that just does yeah. not, that's not true. Yeah, yeah, that's why I say I put myself in the box. I mean, it's, truth it's every, told, there's a number of reasons why the, 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 the black home is broken up and it's not just the black woman. It has to do with the black man as well. And I mean, yes, so, you know, social services and all of that does play a, a part in it. As well, but at the end of the day, we're not really doing our part to get to know each other from the get go to pick the, the perfect mates for ourselves. Yeah, so, that's so, right. That's right. We're so worried that's about right. picking the niggas that either, well, well, a lot of women pick the niggas that got assets that could bring or take care of them or whatever the case may be, or the men are looking for trophy women. We don't well, give a fuck bitch could cook. Y'all don't be uh, giving a fuck if she could um if, if she know how to wash or do laundry at home. Y'all don't even give a fuck half the time if the bitch can bake. Hey, can I exactly can I say can I can I say something on that topic you own? Go ahead. Because it go exactly just like this. People want what they want and not what they need. Let me break that shit down to you. Mm -hmm. I want a bitch with a with big ass and look good and titties and all that, but I really need a woman here to teach my daughters how to be women. We want what we want and not what we need. You need a man there to teach your son how to be a fucking role model to that man. Teach your son how to be a man. Be a role model to your son. But we want niggas. We want they, they females want niggas. They want they want what they want and not what they need. And that goes for the look. It goes for us too as black men. It goes mm -hmm. to us too, as men. It goes I mean, well, there's a lot, want, of, a lot of men and women that don't look for that, though. They look mm -hmm. for, they look for, are you going to be, okay, I'll say this. There's a lot of black women that look out here for men that, are you going to be a good provider? Are you going to be my soulmate? Are you, can, are you compatible with the likes that I have? Or, 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 or you know, there, there's a lot of women that look for those type of things. Yeah, and a man, yeah. Now, same like, thing for what some men. There's a lot of men that you know. On the flip side, looking, looking for a strong women. woman, yeah. But between men, you and ninety percent of the world is being ran by the fucked up majority. That's why it's hard to see people that you're talking about, like where we're talking about. Because like with me, I, I scare women off. I mm. scare them off. Think about this. I'm a father raising twin girls. Mm -hmm. I do. I do the hair and everything. Come on. What the fuck I need a female for? That shit right there terrifies the fuck out of a woman. No, no actually. Well, not, no, no, let me, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me take that back. I'm so sorry, my women out there. Not a woman, but most weak ass females. It scares the fuck out of them. Well, see that now. That, now, this is where we need this conversation. I'm glad you said that. Because that has nothing to do with the weak ass females. That has something to do with yourself. You need to look at yourself but what you're attracting and why you're attracting it. No, 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 no. That's why I was there. Now we going back to what we said. That's why I said I need this. I'm not saying that I'm doing this or nothing like that. We just No, I'm not saying you personally. We need to speak. We we need to we need to learn to choose our mates more carefully. Right. Because right now if I was to say I need a mate, I mean I'm 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 all right. I have the right person in my life. I'm good. But if I was to say, if I need a woman, and we need, if you need, you need a woman in your life, mm -hmm. you understand? If I, for if you have kids, like girls, and you're a single man, you need a woman in your life. But you know, you can't have a female around you 
that's actually doing what you don't want. Like, for example, I'm, I want to I want to build a company. I mean, I own my own company. I got my business license and everything. Mm-hmm. I need a female that's got a business mind as well. You know what I'm saying? I can't fuck with a female on welfare. I can't. I'm sorry. I can't. You got to have some kind of structure, some kind of goal in life. You know. Well, don't say. I, I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go as far as to say that because the reason why I say that is because for a lot of women, and I'm not saying this is the narrative for all women on the system, but for a lot of women that have been on the system, it is used for what is supposed to be a stepping stone for you to go in the right direction and get your shit together. Now there is bitches in there and I when I say bitches I mean bitches because they separate from the queen. There's exactly. a lot of bitches out exactly. here yeah, that yeah. Are on the system and use that motherfucker like it's a got like it's their goddamn job. For real. And I, I would like to say I can say some shit bro but I ain't for that I can tell you. I know some shit. I done seen in my whole life, man, people grow literally like fourth generation of county the welfare. Like, they not for the... And they teaching their kids how to milk the system now. Like, they don't have no goal, no plans to get off of and, it. And, like, and, and let me, not, let me clarify this, people. This, are we not, and I'm not saying that it's just our queens. Because truth be told, it's a lot of Caucasians on the it's system. Every race. No, it's every race. Every race. It's every race out there. It's just that that shit reflected more on our race, our black queens. Well, actually, statistically speaking, Caucasians are the ones mostly on the system than than oh, any race. Any race, than any so, race. I'm yeah, not no speaking doubt. to no you know doubt. minorities, but yeah, no doubt. you know, truth be told, that's what it is. Those it's supposed to be there for a stepping stone to get your shit together, and you move on and and go find a job and you handle your business as an adult. Yeah, that's all it's there for. But some people, like I say, like I, that's what leads me back to the conversation I was having earlier. Whenever you actually sign up to actually mess with that shit, dude, your kid be on there, you getting free money for 18 years, dude. So that'll make a person not fill out a know how to fill out a job application for 18 years. That shit is sick, dog. It's a, it's a mindset. The fuck they getting out, they getting all the people that work money. So it oh, look, and I'm a kill not to cut you off, but I'm a kill you. I'm gonna tell you somebody I know. I don't want to <laughs> check this shit out. <laughs> this is how she did it. She told her baby daddy, nigga, we ain't gotta be together. You can go on about your business, but you're gonna take care of this kid on your own. You're gonna take care of this kid, or I'm gonna involve the white man. She told him just like this. I'm gonna go down here to the county and I'm gonna tell them I had a one night stand. I don't know who the dad is. That way you can get a decent job and help me take care of these kids. That's exactly how she milks the system today. But I'm going to tell so this is something that, that, that our black queens don't know. The moment you get a, 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 a food stamp, $1 from the county, your baby daddy have to pay that back. You will never see a dime from him. Your baby daddy pays the county back every dollar that they're giving you. So you putting him on child support for what? For him to pay the white man? Y'all all fucked. Y'all both. He paying the white man. You getting white man money. So you have to pay them back eventually. And your son, your kid is on welfare forever, dog. It's like it's a fucked up cycle. It's a design. And we got to learn how to break it. We got to know how to break it. It's a mm-hmm. system. That's all. I, that's, that's what I always talk about to people. Like it's cool because this is the between me and you. That's what I was saying about earlier. Now, now that I'm live, I can say it. Mm-hmm. We've been doing that ever since we've been freed, sitting around talking. Pay attention to how it goes. Back in the days of slavery, we was begging to get nigga to get free so we can read. Now that we can read, black people not reading. That's why you see ninety percent, ninety percent of black people have a lot of money. And don't own businesses. You see niggas on social media with all that money. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Just hear me. Just hear me. It's important. Okay. You see a lot of people on social media with all them, all that money. Them mm-hmm. niggas that get killed tomorrow and you got to do a car wash for them. Let me explain something to you because it goes like this. Once we, we, we was fighting to, to get free so we can read. Now that we can read, we got lazy. We don't even want to read now. That's why a lot of that, and this is facts. 
that's why a lot of people get like leave. It's sad that our most of our race, most of it's most of us. That no, I agree with the we, not reading part. I, I not, agree with that. You gotta do car washes to actually bury each other, dog. That shit is fucking insane. But the rise in black businesses lately, I don't know if you researched this, but the rise in, in black, well, in our community as far as owning businesses have went up tremendously, especially African American women. No, no, no. no African American women own businesses now. I'm in Vegas. I'm in Vegas. No, I'm in Vegas right now. And Vegas is ran by women. This whole shit of city is being being built by the whole city is being built by women. Women is the tops. That's why I say I argue with a lot of people about the whole God concept. Mm -hmm. God is a woman. I'm sorry. Y'all the only thing, y'all the only thing. That's a whole nother conversation. You're the only thing can give life, sweetheart. Don't let nobody. Oh, no, I, I'm, I, I, I don't argue that they, the they first took, person that walked this earth was a woman. They took That's the whole the country. They have let's, found let's, her remains. Let's go, let's go, let's, let's go, let's go, let's go. So as far as back to this right here. If you go to Africa, they the Christianity and everybody took the whole the whole religion idea came from Africa. We can agree yeah. on that. Okay, now let me tell you, if you do your research right now, we can get off of here, you can go do your research. In Africa, it's yeah. always been, it's have always been. Oh, you're breaking up. I'm, I'm bad, my bad, my bad, I'm bad, I'm bad. You got me? Okay. I'm, I'm, they I'm, have repeat what you said. Always, it, have, it has always been the mother, the father, the son. You understand? Mm -hmm. Here in America, they took the woman out of the concept to make men dominant over women, the true gods. I'm sorry, sweetheart. Well, I mean, if you want to be technical, all of this shit is Africa. If you want yeah, to no, no, it is. No, no, it's all Africa, but I'm talking about the whole concept, the whole concept on why, like, we, the whole concept on the true gods. Women are the true gods. Y'all the only thing can give life. People even try to go back to talk about Adam and Eve. Long as Adam and Eve had a belly button, sweetheart, they was born by a woman. All mm -hmm. that coming from a dirt and God giving a woman a rib and all that, that's all nonsense, dog. Like I said, I mean, did this go, we could go all the way back. Like I said, yeah. the woman, a black woman is that, and I'm going to be very black clear. Woman, the queen. Was the gave first birth to everything. On yeah, gave birth. yeah, so right now, why do they make it seem like when it comes to religion, it's the man. The, they literally, they, look, look how they brought it here in America. It's the mm -hmm. father, the son, the Holy Spirit. They that's because they, I mean, they have rewritten they, everything now. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying, yeah. yeah they and we allowed that. They, we cut the whole, they cut the woman out the whole. They cut the woman out the true, the whole fucking concept. That's why they. That's why it was okay for them to actually legalize gay marriage because under God we trust. You understand? Mm -hmm. Under God we trust. That's okay. what I said because it's the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. There's no woman in there. It's a pure, pure man, made man. It's it's a man. It's a die. It's a whole. Well, I'm gonna say this. I, I'm gonna say this. Um, we like I said, we allowed that shit to take. To answer your question, why you know why things are everything as far as Christianity goes, we allowed that though. We too fucking accepting. We too goddamn accepting. That's our damn problem. Case in point, look at the villagers. Um, I forgot the name of the, the villagers that that's on that island, but that Christian missionary boy that took went the over there. there on that and island. They killed, they killed. There's a law put in place to protect them people in that island, which tells us, the outsiders or whoever, that you are not allowed to even go over there and fuck with them. But he said, he said fuck it. He thought he was going to change some shit. Took his ass over there sailing, and they took his ass and you ain't seen his ass since. My point That's is this. We used to be like that at one point in time. Now, I don't know what the fuck happened to us, but somewhere down the line, we got too damn accepted and we got lost. And now this is the result of everything. Like I can say, I got, I got, I want to, I'm going to send you a um, text. I'm going to send you an inbox. Okay. I'm going to inbox you. I don't know if you've seen it, but I got a proof that like I got a picture where it got, all the people, all the stuff that was invented by black people, the people who invented it in the years they invented it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. But, but on a, but at the end of the day, the reason why 
we don't own the elevator, the soap, and everything. Everything that we created, the reason why we don't own it is because we're back to what I was saying. We didn't know how to read and we didn't know how to patent our ideas back then. The white man patented the idea before we did. That's why you say that's why Yeah, but that's why you say that's why you say that's why you say that's why you say most that's why you say it's a lot of black businesses rising today because we learning today. We learning now how to patent ideas. It's people like me that's going around spreading that word. Patent your idea, trademark your name, own the name. Matter of fact, shout out to um Buddha Monk in the comments. Um, but yeah. My thing is this, as far as our people now, there is a big chunk of, of you. It doesn't seem like it because there's so many of our people that seem are still mentally fucked up and mentally lost, but there's also a big chunk of our people that are out here teaching it to that are out here teaching our brother, our sister, and whoever else, even the elders, that hey, listen, let's let's do this. Let's get these businesses in our children's name and this, that, and the third. You know what I'm saying? Legacy. And, and a lot of us don't need recognition. We just doing yeah, exactly. it because we're doing it. Exactly, like me. Yeah, that's me. I hate this, and this is just me personally. I don't know about anybody else, but me personally, I hate to see when. A lot of people are doing community, like well, our people are doing community work and they videotape themselves or go live doing it. Why the fuck are you videoing? Like, who gives a fuck? If you're doing it for the cause, do it for the cause. Why are you doing live showing us that you're doing something that you've been supposed to be fucking doing? Why? Exactly. That's why I say we gotta get it, we gotta get back out here, man. Stop letting this internet shit fuck us over. And that's what's wrong with our kids today. Social media is raising our children today. It's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Let me ask you this last question and oh, then yeah, come on. Yeah, come on. I'm gonna wrap it up. So what do you think about racism and the invincible struggle of the mental health in our community? Um I'm gonna tell you, this is this is crazy. They mm -hmm. doing it for the clout, it's for real, bro. They, they are very. Hey, look, but I'm gonna tell you to add to that question. Um, me personally, I have, I have, I have mixed kids. You know what I'm saying? So I have not ever like, you know, I, I don't know how to be racist. You know what I mean? I don't know how to be racist. You know what I mean? So when it comes to like. We gotta, I'm not gonna lie, we need to blend, we need to start learning how to get, expand more and get out and actually like, you know, interact with different cultures. You know what I'm saying? We gotta learn to deal with it. We gotta learn, cause I'm gonna tell you, most of the people that I know in my neighborhood, that's like, you know, fuck the white man and fuck this race. I'm like, dude, why do you feel like that? And they like, because you know, the only white man that I know is the white man that the police and the motherfuckers that come take our kids. The only Hispanics that I know is the gangbangers that come down this, through our neighborhood and gun down our black men. I don't know. I don't know how to communicate with them. So that's why it's so much hate towards that other race, because we don't know how to interact with them. You know what I'm saying? So when it comes to racism as racism, I feel that we need to start. That's that's why I was saying. That's why I was saying what we said on your last show. I was telling you as a as a, for us to build us as a race to build. We need our own doctors. We need our build our own hospital so we can actually take care of our own self. We need to build our own schools so we can teach our kids about our art. Look, 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 before we can be teach our kids about our own culture. You see what I'm saying? This is what's gonna teach us and help us build. Because you gotta think about it, like I said, we just gave we just gave corporate America eleven billion dollars because for Black Friday. Eleven billion dollars, we give them eleven billion dollars a year. That type of money can actually build schools for black people and build our community up. It really can. That's why I was trying to tell him. Money, I say money can't do that. Yes, it, it could. It can. I, and I agreed with you on that aspect. However, this is this is the thing. We have a lot of that. Do you, we have like 32 damn black owned banks in the without the throughout the United States? The problem is we don't support them. We yeah, don't support exactly. Exactly. The, and I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna keep it all the way, I'm gonna keep it all the way high. 
Let's go. Yeah. And, you know, I love my people. I do, I do, I do. But however, when it comes to our businesses, our people have always had this problem. They either one don't support it until it becomes a big fucking thing. Two, they either wanna if they do support it, they want some type of damn discount where it's next to damn nothing. You want some free shit, and that's really not helping anything. You're not really supporting it if you want some free shit. Okay? Or we'll we'll support it, but then we'll be like, we'll talk bad about it and then go turn around and give our money to somebody to to to, to the next race or whatever the case may be. So we we need to fix that within ourselves. The white people not like that. White people then they help they own Mexican shit. Mexicans, them motherfuckers will live in a goddamn two bedroom apartment with one bathroom, one goddamn window, and a small ass kitchen. There be twenty motherfuckers in that motherfucker, and all of them motherfuckers be good. They all got cars. They all hey, got some money. Hey. The children be good. Hey, look, I want to cut you off because I want to get to I, that's a point I want to get on. This is some, and this is an idea I want to give to everybody that's out there because I'm gonna tell y'all some game that the Hispanics gave me. Mm -hmm. That we need to give our people. They's like you say, it's too many chiefs and not enough. It's there's too many chiefs and not enough Indians. Mm -hmm. Everybody wanna be the man, but can't lead us to the promised land. You understand? For real. Everybody wanna be the man. Everybody wanna be that in that play position, but can't get, get in that position and make it better. Mm -hmm. So this is what the Hispanic, this is what he was telling. He was like, You this is how we do it, dude. We'll get five Hispanics and get moving one spot. Mm -hmm. This month, I'm going to pay the rent. That give me four months of paychecks for me to stack my money. Uh huh. That's exactly how they do it, dog. Yep. I could, I, I'll give you a personal story. But everybody, not to cut you off, but this is what they do as us as a race. Everybody want to run a spot. Nah, nigga, this is my shit and this and that. Nah, dog, y'all need to Crab, really... Crabs in a bucket mentality. That's our exactly, problem. Exactly, dog, exactly. There you go. There you I, go. I'll give you a personal, uh, a personal story. Hold on, let me read this comment real quick. Barry Irvin said, it's going to take centuries for black folks to get back to their righteous place. Be the world power again from the ground up. That, that, that's true. It's going to take a while. It is going to take a while. Um, The personal story I was going to give you was... Okay, and this was a couple of years. I had just moved. We had just not too long moved to North Carolina from New York. Um, we had actually, my grandfather came down first because my grandmother passed away. And, um, you know, he was doing well for a while. And we sold, you know, we were selling, he was selling his cars and stuff like that um, after he passed away because, you know, once one house goes, especially if they've been together for years since they were kids, you know, they'll die from a broken heart. The other person will. Yeah, 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 yeah. We were selling his truck and, you know, his cars and stuff of that nature. And a Mexican family um, came to look at the truck. Him, it was him and another guy, I want to say, and a lady. They came, looked at the truck. You know, they loved it, liked it, whatever the case may be. They said, we'll be back. Give me 30 minutes. 30 minutes to an hour. 30 minutes to an hour went by. They came back. Had a knot like this. Cash. Cash now. A knot. Bought the truck. My point, I said that to say this. Because we wound up asking them if they was related. They wasn't even related. They were friends. They were friends and they all pulled together. That, that was their money together to buy that truck. Yeah, because they know they, they finna make money off of it. Why we got a problem with doing that shit is the problem. My question. Oh man, that shit crazy. It drives me insane. We got another comment. Um, Joel said there's many races that do that same as the Hispanics. East Indians do the same thing here in our city. Ten people living in a one-bedroom apartment. Right. It's, it's us. It's us. Shit, you can't even have two black women living in a household long enough. We're going to kill each other. 
ain't even now. It's and I hate to say it like that, nigga. When you... And it should sorry, sorry about that. When you, when you live it like that, you got you got other people like you know you got you probably got the next motherfucker trying to fuck the next motherfucker girl. You, you can't trust motherfuckers, dog. It's just all fucked up, dog. But that goes back to us being they mentally fucked us up. They, but I mean, you forget back then they was putting our men against each other. The slave owners used to have our men oil them up and bathe them and all this stuff only for y'all to fight each other to the death to see who who was the bigger monster or whatever the fuck whose dick was big. I don't even know why they fucking did it. But the point is they used to put y'all against each other all the damn time, fight each other. Yeah, facts, facts. And it's facts, been facts. like this since since <laughs> beginning the times. Right. And it's still like that. We so quick to kill each other and fight each other. I saw I was telling my brother, man, I was walking down there, I was walking down the street the other day, this dude rolling by looking at me. I flagged him down. What's up with it, man? Why you know? You looking at me like I'm a female with a skirt on you. So you like, oh, I thought I knew you. You ain't thought you knew me, bro. You was just mugging. That's all the fuck you was doing. That's just something. You know, that shit is crazy that we do each other like that. Yeah, just that's gotta look each other up and down like that. This is a stop me, money, me mugging each other. You can say all right, like, sis. You can say, it's all right to say hi to me, sis. Hey, how you doing, queen? Keep it moving. Yeah, exactly. Like, you don't gotta, you don't gotta eye me down. Like, that's crazy. Uh, we're gonna be all right uh, one day we're gonna be all right you know what i'm saying but i'm gonna tell you that's what i was always saying it starts from our home though yeah it all starts it starts to, we got it it's all right we got to teach our kids yeah how to treat each other better you know what i'm saying and that's what that's what they're going to go out in the world and change it you know what i'm saying it's, it's, that's why right now hold on hold on just one second let me do this i hate to do this okay. malaysia watch this let me show you what we what we got to teach our kids the things okay. you got to teach our kids if anything happened to you, was if anything happened to me, what what are you supposed to do? Pick up where you left off and take care of each other. Say it again. Pick up where you left off and take care of each other. Right. I know that's right. We need to teach our kids that. Right. Shit like that. If anything happened to me, what do you do? Pick up where you are left off and take care of each other. Period. You carry on that legacy. I own the LLC. I own my own company. Y'all make sure y'all take that company. Y'all run with that shit. Because my death, our death's supposed to benefit our kids. That's what life insurance is for. So if I die, I have a life insurance on my kids. Anything happen to me, they should be able to take that money and put that shit into that company and push it further than what I've been pushing it. Right. And going to keep bubbling and then teach their kids the same shit. We supposed to break the fucking cycle, dog. You know what, though? And to piggyback off that, um, just like when I started, you know, this whole something for the culture started, you know, I had a friend give me some business advice. Another queen gave me some business advice. I took that, applied it, and then, you know, later down the road, I just recently had another friend of mine, another sister, who just started her business, and I gave her that, I passed her that same knowledge mm -hmm. to help her business and i'm pretty sure she's going to do the same way if somebody else come around her they're starting yeah. to she, you know, i you want to do it my point is you got to plant once you plant that seed keep it going keep it going exactly exactly because that's all i'm trying to do i'm trying to do exactly what the hispanics be doing i yep. be I, I speak a little spanish you know so when i and when i'm in california and i be walking down past that's what made me come up against the whole religion thing because these churches have every right to change our community. Every time you go to them churches, you see all them black people come together, dog. Let me explain when I be walking by the Hispanic churches, what I be hearing. They be in there talking about exactly what I've been telling you, what we are talking about. Mm -hmm. Legal, trademarks, business licenses. They teaching their kids, they actual people in their community how to divide and conquer. In our, huh. churches, in our churches, we teaching them to sit around and wait you know what I'm saying? Sit around and wait. You know, he going to come save us and you got to wait. Nah, you're supposed to be teaching our people how to get business license and actually start, you know, dividing. Well, they only teach it what the hell they learn from their damn 
um, ancestors and so on and so forth. But it ain't not between you, but look, between me and you, ain't, but no, that, but between me and you, it's not fact. That's not facts because LLCs, trademarks, and most of these com but most of these companies out here are actually businesses. They're no, businesses. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. No, no, that's what I'm saying. That's why you said that's what I'm saying. Say if a black kid get gunned down in your, your community right now by the police, mm -hmm. why you never see your pastor in your local church out there? Because they're paid by the government to stay out the struggle. In order for you to open a church, you have to sign that paperwork saying you will not be involved in protesting. None of that shit. So they paid to stay out the fucking struggle. That's why your pastor is never out there protesting with none of y'all. It's fucked up, dog. It's a big ass business, and we gotta learn how to do this. Unless, unless now, it, it's a little different because there's some churches that the congregation actually make the decisions in the church, not the pastor. There's a lot of pastors out here that do not own their own church. Yeah. Oh, no doubt. No, no. But at the end of the day, like when it comes to like a kid getting gunned down in the street, that whole church supposed to be out there, congregation and all of them. But they can't get involved because legally, by law, by the government, you open in your own church, your own LLC, your own cup, which is a company, a nonprofit organization. Yeah. Are you opening that? You cannot be, get join the struggle. Anything happen, you cannot join the protest. You can never join the struggle. You're paid to stay out of the struggle. So since you're paid to stay out of the struggle, why don't you teach your kid, teach your community that shit? When you have a fucking ch uh, church full of black people, why don't you teach them exactly what I'm going to teach y'all? Go to LegalZoom.com, everybody. LegalZoom.com. If you want to get your business license, LLCs, you ain't got to pay up front. You want to get your trademark. They can go to the IRS. They can go to the IRS.com yes. as well. Yes, that's what I'm saying. But I'm talking about to actually trademark and own your name. Mm -hmm. Yes, go to LegalZoom.com and it's dirt cheap. You ain't you can you can pay them a monthly payment. You ain't gotta pay them up front. Get out there, y'all, and start owning your own companies. Yep. All it takes is for you to get a business license, for you to actually rent out a store on the corner, rent out a building on the corner, and open up a fucking store. Yep. Exactly what everybody else is doing out here, dog. Yep. This is what other uh, every other race is doing. They literally open the stores. I seen them in L.A. I seen these. I seen a Hispanic literally run a store for ten years. Make so much money, like man. I'm tired of. I'm, I got make man. I own. A, I got a lot of shit in Mexico from this store, dog. I'm going back to Mexico. He sold the fucking store to his brother yes. going to Mexico. They they passing shit down, bro. They taking over. They dividing and conquer. We the only ones sitting around talking about what the next motherfucker owe us, or we just sitting around talking. Right. That's true, though. That's true. It's time. I mean, time it's time to build. It's time, like you say, build that legacy, bro. Build. The legacy. Yeah, but you know that also that that build your legacy and build your 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 build pretty much building your whole foundation and your your brand goes also ties into relationships too. Yeah. As when well. you find your spouse, yeah. I'm going back to what we talked about. When you find your spouse, you're looking for somebody who's willing to build with you. Exactly. That's to why build I say these type of businesses to be lucrative, to be able to have a legacy that your children and grandchildren and so on and so forth can carry on. But you know, if you can find you find somebody that's like this, if I am trying to build a company, baby, pick up everything I got, she get with you and be like, "Well, we finna do this shit together, babe." Or she gonna be like, "Well, I want to open my own company. Either you can, you guys can teach each other, you guys can learn from each other." Mm -hmm. Or you can, you know, you can be a key to my success, or you can be my downfall. That's just yeah. that's going for both ways. You can but be you know what else? That goes downfall. back to us not having because nobody's dating anymore. Like the whole courting courtship has went out the fucking window. Like that yeah. is non-existent. Like people don't even like we don't even date no more at all. Like it's more yeah. long, the whole conversation of what they call dating now is what's up. What's your name? Do, do, you, do you smoke? Drink? Do you do drink? You smoke? <laughs> right. <laughs> and if you do, I'll be over there tonight and it's on. Right. And somehow. And if it's good, and if it's like good, then next thing you know, we got kids and we together. 
Right. Three and years later, we wasn't meant to be together. And that go, you a single parent with a kid, and it is what the fuck it is. Right now, little <laughs> day day and Tawana and then walk running a goddamn round because you didn't build your relationship off a of goddamn the dime bag of fucking loud. Like what's yeah, the yeah, yeah. Because you know, like, we call like being digmatized. You know what I'm saying? Right. Digmatized. You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, this times happen to us, but y'all niggas get pussy yeah, yeah. too now. But no, no, I'm gonna tell you. I see. Most of these niggas out here is looking for shelter. They ain't looking for yeah, good they person. homelessly in love. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna use that one. Homelessly in love. When the time come rolling around, you start seeing all the damn answers, <laughs> they boss, and everybody else come out the woodwork talking about they ready to be a father figure yeah. or they ready to be in love. And next thing you know, this nigga sitting on your goddamn couch eating up all your damn baby snacks. And yeah, you want to have to you got here. Come on now. We got to be better, for real. <laughs> Yeah, we really do. But that's what go back to a lot of shit that my people were saying that it goes, it's, it's, it's fucked up for both the men and the women. You know what I mean? Men got to stop being out there just fucking anything. And yeah. women got to keep their legs closed. Because as long as women keep their legs closed, man won't, man going to be, like if I would say, for example, I meet you, the longer I'm chasing behind you and want you and you're not giving me that thing, the more I'm going to sit there and act right for it. Right. But if you give it to me in one, two or three nights, my nigga, yeah, that shit ain't shit. I'm for to go over here. You know, women gotta play a part in that shit too. You feel me? Well, go you know, I mean, first. look at look at what what's what's being put the agenda that's being pushed on some of the women. Yeah. And you know, that not to nothing. I like Cardi and all, you know, she's from my hood. You know, I get it. You know, she, it's refreshing for her being honest, and I'm all for honesty, but there ain't nobody trying to be no damn stripper. Ain't nobody want to be no city girl. I don't want no city boy. I don't even know what the first of all. What the fuck is a city boy? Let's just let's go right there. What the fuck is a city boy? Oh no, I, I lived in I lived in the country. So them calling me is calling me a city boy. Mean that I lived. I'm from California, like I'm from the city. But my point is this: nobody. I mean, we're, you're pushing scammers and strippers on us. Like and I, you know, I'm not knocking where they have came from and now are, you know, gotten to. I get it. You struggle, but by let's be real, you made a choice to be a stripper. You made a choice. You made a choice to be out here sitting your ass in the ass and doing all this other shit. Yeah. Facts. So and but that's, that's just being glorified. They say the new 40 is the new 30. The new 50 is the new 40. That's why we ain't got grandmothers and motherfuckers out here with morals anymore. Females that can sit in the kitchen and actually tell you a recipe that they learned from their grandmother or nothing like that. Because everybody want to be next social media. Got everybody believing they're young and the motherfucker again. All that's the 80s, great. all the 80s women, we we the last of the damn dying breed. Dying breed. Dying breed. We are. It's, it's a we don't that bitches that know how to damn cook and actually know how to do do shit in the and house. Most of them and most of them is turned the fuck out on social media, dog. I'm sorry to say. No, I'm not. It's, sure only, that it's only a chosen few like me and you. Like me, it's only a chosen few. Cause I can show you. I seen you some some pictures of some niggas that's nigga nigga that's older than me. Literally one year older than me. Look like he 48 or some shit. And I can show you a picture of a nigga that's 31. That look completely 20 to like damn near years older than me. Niggas make the 80s look bad. A lot of people make 80 babies look bad as fuck, dude. Like, you know, That's they are your crazy fucked up. about it. That was the damn crack era right there. But yeah, we got yeah. Them children out here looking like death. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> look at what's, what's his name? Juice World that passed away. God forbid. And, I, you know, rest in peace. That was crazy, man. Damn, hell, man. But to be honest with you, he brought his death, death on himself. He was taken. Yeah. I mean, yeah. anybody know that? I don't glorify it. That's why you know, you know, certain shit, certain people I post, like you know, rest in peace on my my my, my platform. But I don't do too much, you know. Shout out to people. I I see all right. my niggas who die from drugs. I'm not for to promote that shit. Cause what if my kids decide to be like, who is that? Right. Why did he die? And I got to explain that. That's what's wrong with us. We don't protect our kids from shit anymore. I remember back in the days, my mom and them used to actually 
close, make sure we all land down. She had cracked the door to make sure that we don't turn on the light. Mm -hmm. Make sure we all sleep and all the lights off. And then they'll light a joint. Then, you know, play music and shit. These mm -hmm. days, we play. It's say peripheral vision on the fucking music. Mm -hmm. And you plan it around your kid. And you wonder why we're for these kids are being raised fucked up because we're not protecting our kids from this bullshit out here, dog. We're yeah. not. We don't do it anymore. Hell, a lot of us are partying. A lot of them are partying with their damn kids. I and, know. In the club with them. I and know one right now that's, that's 40, 40, 45, 46. Right now, and their daughter is what? 29. And she literally got more, like, more pictures than her daughter in the fucking club that her daughter go to. I'm like, and her and her daughter all out, popping bottles. I know her daughter be like, damn, mom, every time I go out, you want to come and shit, but you too old for that shit. You 46 years old. What the fuck is you doing in the club? You got grandkids sitting at home. Like, what the fuck? They living it up like Ja Rule. What you mean? <laughs> hey, hell no, nah, man. That's This is why most of this is why we fucked up our hair as a race, though, man. Yeah. Because we don't have we don't have that grandmother mentality there, that grandmama mentality, you know, used to, that used to be around to where... You know, ain't no morals anymore, man. It's fucked right. up. Ain't no grandmother just giving hard candy no more, giving you, sneaking you and giving you a dollar or five dollars when your mama ain't looking. We ain't got that no more. No, oh, man. No. Nah, we got man. the grandmamas walking around asking you if they can get a bag on credit and shit like that. Like, it's too much. It's just too much. I got, I got, <laughs> a, I got a picture. I don't know if you see, noticed that picture that I posted on the Grind of Fall page to where it's, it had them three females on the beach with their ass out. And oh yeah, say, yeah. And they say grandma, somebody, grandmother, twenty years from now, like twenty years from now, that's gonna be. Here's a picture of your grandmother. Like, are you fucking serious? That's crazy. Your kids are gonna be on social media. So your grandkids will be on social media twenty years from now, and they will find a picture of that fuck that same fucking picture you just posted. They're gonna find it. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you, dude? <laughs> No morals or respect. You know what I'm saying? It's like a, a lady on there, what, 50 some years old on, on social media. I'm looking for me a man. I'm, you on social media? Like, where the fuck is this? this, this we're going to shit. The world is going to shit, sweetheart. <laughs> we're going to shit, and it is what it is. Well, to die for, I want to thank you for giving your insight and your views. Um, to the culture tonight. Is there anybody you would like to shout out or give any recognition to? Um, shout out to Top Dog Entertainment TDE on the 18th of um this month, which is in a few days. We I'm gonna be out at the Top Dog Entertainment concert. I'm gonna be going live out there. So everybody try to tune in, come rock with your boy. Um I'm gonna try to have everybody in the um up in my live, you know, Kendrick Lamar and everybody and all that. But um Shout out to everybody. You know what I mean? Everybody that been rocking with me. Ain't, I, I, hey, look, do you know, this is for me to you, Miss Lady. I haven't been on nobody's platform in almost a year and a half. I literally been sitting back watching these niggas bubble. And I've been watching them in my spot and doing, I'm, I'm coming from my spot, y'all. Y'all niggas watching, I'm coming. I'm coming back for what's rightfully on to me, dog. For real. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, my social media, the number two, D-Y-E, the number four, T-D-E. That's all social media sites. Is that's my that's my I'm to die for at Top Dog Entertainment, but yeah, man, hey, you hear me? I'm coming for what's rightfully on. I know that's right. My spot. I've been seeing them perform in all the spots I performed at. I've been sitting back watching them for a year and a half, just sitting back watching them. I'm coming back. The I'm coming back. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, shout out to everybody out there doing their thing. Um, the main thing I really want to say before I end this broadcast is, if you can, y'all go to LegalZoom.com, man. That a day, a day you can you can you can type up your you can type up a will for your kids a trust fund they'll help you do all that shit you ain't gotta never do nothing but just pay them and they'll do everything else for you dude legally sign legally y'all if y'all want to own your own company your own trademark this is for all my black people out there get your business license every year you have a chance to be an entrepreneur we get an income tax every year. Every year it ain't nothing but four hundred and fifty dollars to get your business license in your fucking state and call yourself an entrepreneur on your own company and start selling your shirts, t-shirts, or whatever. It's easy, dog. Every year, yeah. next year, income tax season's at around the corner, dog. Take four hundred dollars and fifty dollars and go on and get your business license, dog. And start. This is why the Mexicans stand on your neighborhood corner and sell oranges without them tripping. 
because they have a fucking business license, my nigga. Exactly, bro. LegalZoom.com. Right there, bro. Go there if you want to write your kid trust funds. You want to do all that legally. They do all that shit. How your documents stack everything, your last words for your kids, everything, whatever you want legally when it comes to paperwork, LegalZoom.com, bro. For real. This is where all the other races is being the Mexicans and then put me up on that. That's why they winning right now. That's where they going to when they building companies all in your neighborhood off of that fucking website right there, dog. I can show you my paperwork that I got from my, my business. I got right now, I got shareholders. I got bonders. Hey, you hear me, Jazz? Right now, I can show you right now. I have shareholders. I can actually... So I give you, make you a shareholder of my company. I have my bond, yep. bond papers, my bond papers and all that right here. Like it's, it's all, I have all that. They give you everything you need to run your company. Man, yep. y'all start, get on that, y'all. start focusing on taking over these communities, dog. And actually, if you get into these, go to these council meetings, man. I'm going to show you, it only take 15 signatures, 15 signatures for them to put a boys and girls club in your neighborhood right now. Why you think they building soccer motherfucking fields and building up these, the Hispanics is building this shit up? Because they going down to the council members with yeah. the motherfucking signatures. All it takes is motherfuckers in your neighborhood, 15 signatures in your neighborhood for them people to sign and say they want this in your neighborhood. And legally, they got to give it to y'all. Yeah. You understand? Because it's only 12 council members and it only take what 13 of you motherfuckers to oh, nigga, get what y'all want. Yep. Y'all don't need money, dog. Stop playing, man. It's, it's We only going to win by paperwork, black and white. You see what I'm saying? He says it's time for us to take this shit back. Oh, my mama and own ours, my nigga, for real. And I just gave y'all the game that all of our elders supposed to be giving us. If they was new to shit, if our older OGs knew this, that I would say, hey, Jazz, if they knew this, we'll be winning right now. If the ones that was it, the OG that was so the time is now. Yeah. Yeah, the OG, that's why I was trying to tell OG that was on here now. If he knew that game, do you know how much man that boy had a platform? He he, he you know what I'm saying? If he was teaching mm -hmm. that when he was up with, we'll be winning. Jay-Z is a prime example on what we're supposed to be doing. He he giving it to y'all. And mm -hmm. I'm giving y'all the game. It all we have to do is this one thing. Yeah. Research. And what do research take, Jazz? Mm -hmm. Reading. So yep. you better start reading, dog. I'm sorry. That's what yep. it's gonna take. I, learned, I read up on I learned I read up on a, on how to actually own my 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 artist name. I mm -hmm. swear to God, two weeks like well, let me say that two three months later, I was launching my own company. I wanted to own my own name and fucked around and became my own fucking own my own company. I fucking entrepreneur because once I got yeah. to reading, I fell in love and I knew what it takes to actually win. So everybody out there, man. Let me go on and let her end the platform. Shout out to everybody. Yeah, y'all better take these jewels for what they are. Use this them. Is, this is how the every race is winning in your neighborhood. There's no Kimmy. Listen to me. There's no food for less. No, no Albertsons. No store. No, no store in your in your no liquor store. Nothing can be ran without an LLC. Yeah, what I'm telling y'all to go get. You get an LLC. It's a company. All you gotta do is attach, get put your attach your wife's name to it, your kid name to it, file taxes at the end of the year. That's twenty seven thousand dollars for your kid at the end of the year. After every fucking at every fucking social that's attached, because they're employees of your company now. Let's talk business. I teach y'all niggas a business one on one. I teach you niggas how to also launch a company and get your shit. You know what though. We, I might have you back to actually do that, but we we gonna we gonna talk about that. We gonna yeah, talk. <laughs> talk off of here because I'm gonna tell you something too. Your whole platform is amazing. Thank I wanna, you. I want to teach you how to trademark and own that motherfucking name, own it all. You oh, oh, I'm, oh I'm on it now. I'm on yeah, it. You know, yeah. I'm but you probably know a little some jewels. I don't know, and I'm gonna drop some jewels. We gonna, of course, gonna, you know, I'm always willing to take some jewels now. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I got you. I got you. <laughs> But thanks for having me, man. Everybody out there, man. Shout out to Jazz for having me on the you know platform, and you know, shout out to everybody for watching it. And y'all check him out. Fun. Check his music out, y'all. He got his own group as well. I'm gonna put that link up. I have to join his group. He's always posting in there. He's very friendly and he talks to everybody. So y'all go ahead, check him out. Check his music out. His page out. His Instagram. And yeah. <laughs> Let's get it, and I'm gonna see y'all. I'm gonna see y'all next time. I'm gonna tune in on the next one. You say you should come back again. 
brother, I can learn from you. Hey, bro, just follow me, bro. And if you could, you follow me and inbox me your number. I'm willing to call you and we can actually talk real business one on one. And I can give you all the ins and outs on how to do it, bro. I promise you. I, man, That's I want all tough. my black people. I want all my black people to take this shit back. It's time. It's That's time. So we're going to see y'all people next Friday. Next Friday is actually the season finale. And um, we're going to have Positive K, y'all. Positive All K right. going to the building. And, and I'll be here. About, you know, he's a legend in his own fourth right as well. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. I'll be there. I'll be there. But shout out to everybody. See y'all later, man. Y'all have a good night. See y'all next week. Okay, see you next week.